Hi, Gemini, Sun, Moon, and Rising. This is going to be your general mini cross reading for August 2021. This reading is going to be looking at the effect the Leo moon that we just had on the 24th uh, may have on your third house as we move through the month of August. Uh, Gemini, you are the ruler of the third house, so this is going to be about communications of all kinds. Faxes, text, phone calls, uh, letters by mail, uh, emails, I don't know, smoke signals. <laughs> uh, so the media, the news, the radio, newspapers, magazines. Um, it is going to be about um, primary education. So from pre-K up to 12th grade, right before you go into college. It's going to be about short trips of all kinds, whether this is short trips across town or maybe trips to the next hamlet or village it is going to be about your neighbors and not just your neighbors or your neighborhood but that could also include your village your town your state um it's going to involve all modes of transportation but that deal in short distance so this is cars trains buses maybe even walking um and so we're going to take a look at that we have that full moon fell at zero leo and that activates uh the leo point that goes back to 2017. We had a series of eclipses across the Leo Aquarius Aries, and it ended in the last one on January 20th of 2020 at zero Leo. So that point's being reactivated again. I think we've got a new moon in Leo this month as well, and we're gonna have another full moon. So there are two full moons in Leo, and I think the new moon's going to be in Leo. So. I'm excited to see the cards have been really interesting for a lot of the other signs. Um, I have people ask me all the time, do I, which reading do I look at? You know, if the sun sign doesn't resonate, go look at your moon sign. If the moon sign don't resonate, look at your rising sign. Okay. And uh, so here we go. I do have the radiant white deck with me. I have the Levita Sibilas for clarification, and you're gonna get an opportunity to formulate one question to the angel answer cards. So let me go ahead and pull this around and let's see uh, what the cards have to say. I've already done some meditation and shuffling. Oh, the card wants to present itself. Now, of course, this can't, whatever the cards say, this reading can't be true for everybody. That does require personal reading. And so if you're interested in a personal reading to gain more insight into your situation, you can click on the little eye that's going to appear up here during the course of the reading. Uh, and that'll take you directly over to the website. You'll find tarot consultations on the main menu. Click that little arrow. It'll do a pull down, drop down menu. And uh, you can select the, the reading of your choice. So let me put this down here. This is the crux of the issue. Let's turn it over and see what it's about. It is the Nine of Swords. What is the foundation of the issue, the energy of the foundation? I'm going to split these cards. It is the Two of Pentacles. So there's some kind of choice or decision you need to make. And it's really, really, really giving you a hard time. What is the energy of the near or distant past? Hmm. The Six of Pentacles. I'm sorry, the Six of Cups. That's interesting. That card just fell for the Leo in that same position. I'm not Leo for Taurus. <clears throat> um, what is the unknown factor energy coming in? Hmm. Ace of Swords. And what is the uh, energy of the near or distant future perhaps coming up? Right. It is the Three of Wands. That's quite interesting. No major arcana cards, so this tells me, and incidentally, I've got every suit represented here. Swords, cups, coins, and wands. But I, I have more Ace of Swords. And there is something really, really, really bugging you. It's keeping you up at night. And you've been worrying about it excessively. Okay, something to do with either someone from your past. Maybe this is about uh, some kind of home project. Maybe it's about your children. I don't know. 
there's also this indication of movement and travel as evidenced by these ships there and there and this tells me that there's something that you know you need to do but you are afraid to do it twos always represent a choice an option a duality and that a decision needs to be made okay some kind of crossroads doing two different things at the same time trying to juggle two things at the same time but whatever this thing is it's really got you upset so what is the energy over the whole reading there's your card the page of swords representing Gemini now all pages are students of communication or students of whatever suit that they represent <clears throat> And this guy is not afraid to probe, ask questions, have those conversations uh, to get to the heart, to the truth of the matter. But it could also be that this person is a really nasty, can cut you to the quick, all right, the kind of news or message or the things that the person says. But this is a lot of swords happening, Gemini. That's where we are. And quite interestingly, you know, he's on a on a beach. He's overlooking a bluff, and there he is standing on a little hill over what appears to be like a river or a lake or something of that sort. Hmm. It's these mountains in the Ace of Swords. Hold on one second. So give me one second. It's not necessarily in this card, but hold on. There's something about the mountains. And those same mountains show up in the Fool card. So let me see. doesn't quite fit what's happening for me. Maybe it'll come to me as I read, because I'm going to look at this card, okay? And the first thing I'm going to do, because the Ace of Swords with this Nine is a Ten of Swords, and the Ten of Swords is this idea of being stabbed in the back. There's a sense of betrayal here. Sometimes it's an ambush-like situation, right? And... But it is the ace. Let me get back to... Let me see if there's any... Okay. The ace of swords. Even though aces are yes cards, aces are double-edged. Right? The sword is a double-edged weapon. Swords represent thoughts, belief, communications, ideas. Thoughts, belief, perceptions, ideas, and communications. Right? And we know that sometimes all of these things can be fun and informative, but they can also be really ugly and nasty. Okay? So let me explain. All aces can mean the excessive degree of everything. So... <clears throat> It depicts the autumn. Um, in the southern hemisphere. And in the northern hemisphere, it depicts the time frame of September, October, and November. So, this could be about March, April, or May. That's our past, right? Now, it suggests inevitable and, and irrevocable change and an urge upsurge of energy. 
The Ace of Swords is connected with intellect and signifies the awakening of mental powers which may cause conflict at first, but are ultimately conducive to growth and development. It says that its qualities are becoming available to you. If you can take advantage of them, you can achieve greater happiness and success. You may be sure that something is about to change which will have far-reaching consequences as the Ace of Swords card is one of great power and force. It implies that there is a focus on a critical and potentially volatile situation or circumstance. And you may find yourself in a position of having to take action or make a decision under stressful circumstances. It is important that you keep your emotions balanced in order to make the correct decision. The Ace of Swords tells of the excessive degree of everything. And it may be implying a feeling of sadness, depression, anxiety, and wasted efforts. It carries with it the expectation that things will not work out as planned. It tells you that if you want changes in your life, then it is up to you to make it. It implies that it is a time of new beginnings and asks you to put the past behind you in order to be able to move forward to a more prosperous, prosperous future. Well, with the Two of Pentacles, indicates that financial gains, success, and victory are yours. There it is. And that's what this is. That's you stepping out into something new. You're going to have to make the decision. And I think what's happening is that many of you are afraid to move from the position in which you're in because maybe it's a relatively nice position. So anytime we try something new, there's a lot of fear involved. Okay? This is not a source. The key words are failure, miscarriage, disappointment, despair, death, misery, anxiety, doubt, solitude, grief, conflict, illness, suffering, misery, deceit, sadness, and a fear of loss. It indicates the completion of events and implies that there is a focus on suffering and anxiety. It may be an indication of despair and anxiety which is causing misery and a sense of hopelessness may also be prevalent. It tells of sad circumstances, unfortunate events, and ongoing unhappiness. It also suggests dark thoughts, nightmares, and troubles of the mind, even though the actual reality may not be so negative. It implies that this may be a be an introspective time for you and others who wish to seek help, but find they get little response. It tells of a preoccupation with the past experiences, particularly those of a painful or hurtful nature. It suggests that an anxiety and worry about what others think and say about you is keeping your mind in a negative state and you are encouraged to rest and still the mind. It indicates a fear of the future and an inability to relax. This leads to anxiety, sleeplessness, and depression. It is a message to be patient as better things are coming soon. You are asked not to try to rush things at this time as you may hinder your own progress. It may imply that either yourself or someone close to you may be going through a time of conflict, anger, and or mental anguish, and you are asked to share in someone else's suffering and offer comfort and support. It also tells of an, an unfortunate set of events and an inconsolable unhappiness and deep personal loss, but it asks that you look at what you have in your life and stop feeling negative and sorry for yourself. Three of Wands. And I think this is a great energy for this reading to end on because it speaks to established strength, enterprise, beginnings, optimism, luck, effort, trade, commerce, discovery, assistance, giving, cooperation, partnership, and help. The divinatory meaning of this card is a stage of initial completion of a creative project with new horizons, with new ideas forming on the horizon. It tells of being a good friend and of someone who is willing to give help and assistance. It may be indicating that the right partner or teammate will bring about positive energy which will enhance and bring about success. It may be indicating that someone of sound knowledge may be available to offer the assistance needed. Keep an open mind and an open ear. When this card appears, it may be related to a business a venture or project, but it may also be relating to a new career, life path, or lifestyle. 
on a business or financial level. This is a message that the seeds sown in the past will prosper and come to positive fruition. It asks that you remain positive and willing to work. You know, sometimes I've seen this card show up when it's like you're remodeling like interior design or decorating or something like that. This card implies that prog progress is very much dependent upon, oh, upon luck, although a positive beginning has been made. It suggests that there's more than one person involved and can also suggest that there will be suggest that there will be a period of suspended activity before future successes are realized. This card suggests that the end is in sight and only a little more is left to do. It suggests that tying up of loose ends and of someone who is coming to terms with past thoughts. Now, my question is, what is this news or message coming in? Where is it coming from? And what are you so upset about? Or feeling sorry for yourself about or fearful of making a decision so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up and I don't know if this is some news that you're waiting on right because sometimes it says if you've been waiting on news or a message it's about to come in well we see it over there with that night I'm sorry with that page and that's the only court card so this could even be you, Gemini, and the self-talking that you're doing to yourself, the anxiety and the worry. But again, only you have control over your own mind. Nobody else controls that. The page. There it is. The messaggere. <laughs> News from far away. Prigione. Someone who's stuck in a situation and feel they can't get out. Okay? Unable to move. Superbia. This is an interesting card because it is one of two lucky cards in the Sibila. There's only two of them that can negate any type of negativity. But this card also indicates this idea of um, uh, pride. Okay? Yeah. Or someone who loves luxury, high end living, right? But to me, it's coming across as pride. And this could be the idea that someone is offering you help or will be, but you're too prideful to accept. Well, that's silly. Sometimes in life we do need help. And you shouldn't fear asking for help or even um, receiving help if it's truly needed. So let's see what this Nine of Swords is all about. Whatever this decision is, you feel it's quite tough. Conversazione. Well, let's see. Fidelta. Hmm. And the dispiacere. So this tells me that there was a conversation that you had with someone very close to you, right? Someone whom you thought you could trust. Someone for all intents and purposes who would have supported you or helped you. But I think they gave you some news that you weren't expecting. Now I find that to be quite interesting because we see this message coming. So I don't know, this could even be a letter from far away from somebody who went to jail you know, a message has come in. Somebody's incarcerated. <laughs> okay. They're locked up and they can't get out. And if that's the case, it's because they... Let me read to you the superbia. The superbia. Now, this doesn't tell me what the message is about. Nor does the letter on the table that's making this woman cry. Typically, this card, the messaggere, is an intensifier. And it says within the week, some message is going to come. Okay? Uh, a package, a news, some, something's going, or someone is going to arrive. 
imminently. That's what it says. So let me um, get to the Prigioni. It is another Nine of Swords, believe it or not. It's a Nine of Spades. This card says... It represents anything that chains you to a situation, person, or idea. This can be literal, such as an addiction, a dependency, an abusive relationship, physical subjugation to another, incarceration, or figuratively as being prey to one's fears and emotions. The card highlights a condition of helplessness and powerlessness to change events. Whether this powerlessness is actually real or just a figment of the imagination, is usually foretold by other cards. So I don't know, I can't answer that for you. It also represents victims. Figuratively, it shows a great stumbling block together with impotence in the face of one's destiny. It also indicates situations of deprivation, isolation, and of a lack of support, as its primary meaning is that of a loss of a friend. But this can also be applied to the loss of a mate or spouse and not through bereavement, like someone has passed away. But the card also acts as a warning and it warns of a potential loss of one's freedom and of situations of subordination and subjugation to another. It indicates legal problems, trouble with the police and incarceration. It can indicate a punishment to be expiated, a difficult commitment that has to be seen through to the very end, humiliation, debts, the presence of enemies, and an adverse destiny. As a place, it can represent a prison or any place that we find unpleasant, such as a hospital. Figuratively, it indicates isolation, solitude, and spiritual emptiness and the inability to analyze one's behavior to see where mistakes have been made. Financially, it indicates poverty and misery on all levels. In love, it represents someone who is close-hearted and does not know how to truly love. It can also represent someone who is single due to a heavy character flaw or even a physical handicap. In a relationship, it heralds separation and or divorce. The deeper meaning of this card is that you will have to develop the tools to free yourself from the condition of slavery and subjugation. As can be seen, there is an unbarred window in the background, which is a window of opportunity. Sorry. There are three steps, the steps that have to be taken to solve the situation or the necessary actions. A banister which offers support after the first efforts have been made. A vase indicating the receiving of wisdom and the lesson learned and eventually a way out which cannot yet be seen. This card, the Dispiacere. She is the ace of swords or spades. And she says it indicates bad news. The card does not describe the event causing the bad news, but it underlines <clears throat> excuse me, the negative emotional impact that something or someone will have on you. It foretells of a period of difficulty and sorrow and the failure of a project, humiliation, vicious gossip, and or anger in whatever area inquired about. But it can also herald violence, attacks, and arguments that become physical. In love, it heralds misunderstandings, disappointments, and separation, and the possibility of domestic violence. In family affairs, it foretells of falling out, bitter disputes, feuds, and very sad news. In financial matters, it may indicate disrupt, uh, bankruptcy, dismissal, a bad investment, and or bullying at work. And in legal matters, it indicates serious problems with the law and unfair judgments. The two main areas of impact are found is first the open letter, which heralds unexpected bad news. This can be from any source. The second is the woman's reaction to the letter. 
as it indicates an event that will shake you to your core and will negatively affect you emotionally and on a very deep level. But broadly speaking, this card can also indicate a period of inner turbulence, of painful interchange and or bad karma that is demanding repayment. Well, it says special attention should be paid to the cards next to this one because invariably it refers to why you are crying. So there was some meeting or conversation, maybe even a date with someone that you knew, you trusted, you loved, and they said or did something or gave you some very, very unexpected news. But you still have a, dis a decision to make. Maybe you loaned somebody some money. Maybe it was a large portion of money. Now they, you know, you went to go collect and they're like, oh, I ain't got the money. I can't give it back to you. I don't know what to tell you. But this card says that there's a way for you to figure it out. Okay? So, you just have to make the decision to do something about it. And the question is, how bad do you want it? <laughs> right? So, it's a wands card. And that's always about your, your focus and your determination. How bad do you want it? So, here we go. One more time, and I'm going to go ahead and pull the cards. I hope you formulated your question. Here's the card. It's simply... Excuse me, it simply says, don't stop. I'll let you look at that here. Don't stop. So here we go. I know it can be scary to do stuff on our own or to change or whatever the case may be. This is not the time to give up. Continue to move in the direction of your hopes, dreams, and plans. You are on the right path and you should see progress as long as you stay the course. It is very important that you stand your ground and believe in yourself. Do not allow others to intimidate you into quitting. Just because they don't have your vision does not mean you shouldn't follow your heart. And I mean, there you are looking out over your, you know, over your ships that you either set sail or you're waiting for them to come back in. But it's all up to you. That's what I have for you, Gemini. That's quite interesting. Uh, this could even be some kind of trips or travel here. Should I stay? Should I go? I don't know. It could be one of those things. So that's what I have for you for August 2020 and your third house. And until next time, be well, stay safe, and namaste.